endeavor or in life, if you find yourself in a bad spot, you just have to remain fearless. <laughs> We're here with Mercy Ann. She's gonna run the boiling hole here in just a minute. First time in a whitewater kayak. How do you feel? Um, I feel pretty excited, but I'll be fearless because now for Pete told me I have to be fearless, so I should be fine. Should be fine. This is my favorite niece. Don't tell the others. You ready? Yes. Let's do it. My famous and fearless niece, Mercy Ann, was born completely deaf. And while she does have a cochlear implant, she cannot use it around water. And a lot of times she's stuck with reading lips. And today's video will showcase her experience. We're here, we're buckled in. Guy's gonna be down there on the rock running safety. Marie's gonna be taking pictures. And Mercy Ann, whoo! The mayo is pumping a little bit today. Should be a rowdy time, should be fun. You ready? Let's do it. First time on a whitewater boat has to be unnerving enough. I just couldn't imagine doing it without being able to hear. So we have always been able to communicate pretty well and we've always had a very strong connection between the two of us. And she's wanted to do this over the winter. She's been talking about kayaking with me when it warms up. So today's the day. I was so happy to be able to video the experience and I just wanted to showcase how deaf people process the world around them. Don't be stiff, be loose. If I lean the boat, don't fight it. Just lean with it. I'll keep us up. All right. When we go into that current, lean to the right.
Ja. And our tandem run was a success and she really loved it. And with that behind us, now it's time to take Evan and Guy and Pete in for a little high water boiling hole fun. This is gonna be like a combination of Kibler with the really fast flow and the big water of the tuck. This will be the biggest rapid you've ever gone through. Yep. It, it, the flow today is so much more, it's gonna be like a different rapid. Some things are just so hard to change when kayaking. And one of those things to overcome is the instinct to let go of your paddle with one or both hands and grab the kayak when you're flipping instead of utilizing a brace stroke. And that's something Guy's been really working on and sooner or later that's gonna come together for him. So I surf the hole a little bit here as Guy runs back to the top and here he is going on a second run because he demanded that that wasn't going to be how this went down. Boat angle right is going to be very important in here. So Pete leads out, his boat angle's good, he's looking good, but this last right stroke right there got him spinning and up on the rock he went. I really love this next shot. You see Pete tending to Evan in the water, helping provide that little rescue assistance while I got the boat. It's a little rowdy in there today, isn't it, boys? Yep, and then what are you gonna do second? Pull the skirt. Nope, you're gonna lean forward all the way. All the way, face to the skirt, remember? And we're getting them all in the water today. This is my daughter, Ryan. Her first time at the boiling hole. And at higher water, a lot of creek lines open up on the left side of S-turn. And that'll be just about all the action we want today. She's still learning how to become very comfortable in a boat, both upright and upside down, which is a very important thing in white water. And until she's really comfortable being upside down and being able to get out of that boat, we're gonna kind of keep it very shallow and very safe for her. So we're gonna kind of move her over here to the right side and send her on down this nice little ramp. But if you go over there, you can go out, finish the wrap. Yeah, let's go that way. 
All right. So, look at all that current. I think once you get past this one, you'll be set to go. Are you ready? You think you'd get down through there? <laughs> All right, I'm gonna let you go in just a second. All right, Brian, you gotta find your way through, okay? You ready? Lean to the left, lean left, lean left. You're doing perfect. See, relax. See, if you lean the right way, it's all okay. I'm gonna get you in this good part, Trent. Oh, once you go in the middle. Where the good flow is. Oh my goodness. You're leaning the wrong way. All right, you ready? Are you ready? You ready to finish it out? Lean forward. Paddle. Yes, girl. Here we go. Don't let go. Yeah. Woo. Mercy Ann and I are back for our second run, and this time we're going to take the creek lines. We're gonna do the booths, both at the boiling hole, and we're gonna to try to get this big boat down the slot booth at S-turn. So at high water here, the left side of S-Turn, the left side of the river here, has a lot of lines that are open, that are not open at low water. And the kids wanted to explore, so I encouraged them to do that. They're just gonna pick their way down these two and three foot ledges all the way to the big pool below. And that's important that they have the confidence and the experience of finding their own way down, something they've never seen anyone run. 
and uh, they had a great time doing that. And since they were mixing things up, I thought I might as well. And I went for the slot booth, except I wanted to go through there with a reverse booth. Kudos to Pete for holding on to both his paddle and his boat until I tell him to let go of it. And another thing that I really appreciate is that just after this, Evan comes racing in to give him the stern to kind of make that rescue assist as well. And that's pretty cool. Alright guys, back here at the Mayo. I'm trying out a Jackson Rockstar. Got a pretty good deal on that just this morning. So I'm gonna see what that's all about. And I got the main man, Kevin Champ, with the gradient. We're gonna be practicing up here at the boiling hole, doing some different things. So Kevin is not very comfortable with edging his boat into current and that shows up when we're trying to do peel outs and especially when we're trying to catch eddies. So since he's not comfortable edging his boat, that's what we're going to be doing today. So most paddlers really just like to run the river and they're not really looking to push the envelope and do those things that they're uncomfortable doing. But that just means you're going to learn at a much slower pace. So if you can take a day like this, especially when it's a one-on-one -on -one scenario, and really dive into those things that make you uncomfortable, you can make a lot of progress in a very short amount of time. And as you see there, he's having trouble holding his edge, or basically you gotta lean the boat, and that's what edging is. It's more of leaning the boat than it is of leaning the person. And when you're about to throw your boat into a cross current or a current that hits the side of your boat, you have to take that in consideration and you always want to lean away from the incoming current. That way the water can go under your boat. Otherwise it'll grab that rail or those edges, the side of your boat, and it's gonna flip you. And that's called a window shade. So as you see, Kevin comes in here, he's holding his lean better. And as the day goes through, we work through some different aspects of ferrying, of surfing, carving, and sliding. And we'll go through all those little by little. So what we would do is practice till we got bored of it, and then get out, walk up, take a break, and then run back through here, and then practice some more. So the kayak can basically do a couple different moves. It can paddle straight in a straight line. It can spin in a circle with no forward momentum, or it can carve. And carving is where you put it on one edge or the other and paddle in a wide arc. And when you come in and out of these currents, I'll put that carve on there Carve into the current and then carve into the eddy. So you're carving twice and basically he's practicing peeling out and catching eddies every time he does this. And that was a little better there. He's getting more comfortable. It's a delicate balance of how much you lean your boat, the boat angle facing into the current, the speed coming into the thing, your body position, and when and where you put your strokes. 
and I'll probably do a dedicated video on this in the future because it's a lot to go into but I just want to show the progress Kevin makes the biggest thing he's having at this point is the little paddle strokes kind of like little flattles as you see there he's a little timid with it but he's got his boat angle he's getting that edge he's learning to hold it he just needs to be more aggressive with the paddle I'm showing him you can do it all in two strokes another thing I have him practice is to do a little less carving a less edging like this one and straight ferry kind of with a flat boat and that can be called sliding it's really surfing across the top of the current versus carving through there and you can avoid going further downstream that way the trick to getting across in that method is locking your boat angle a lot steeper than when you carve two so you can try to do it with just two strokes Kevin and I bring our efforts up here to the boiling hole where the currents are a little swirly and a little stronger and it got him. So he dipped an edge. His first reaction was to lean away as you see in this freeze frame. But then he brings it under control, realizes he needs to brace, tries to throw the right C and just doesn't make it in time. But the instincts are starting to kick in. Unfortunately, he does not have the instinct to roll yet. You good? What, what happened? Go go straight to shore with your boat. <laughs> Where was the yeah, roll I'm part? Never swimming never again. again. You had a lot of pollen on the inside of your boat. Yeah. It's good to wash it out every now and then. <laughs> So up here at the boiling hole, I was showing him how to surf the hole, which is an essential skill, learning how to side surf and front surf, and uh, just mix it up with the stronger current you'll find here. And this is a fantastic place to practice all that. And there you see him almost get in there in the hole proper. He was right up in the bubbles there. And with this stronger current, if your boat angle is not right and you don't lock that, you get flushed a lot further downstream. Still dipping a little edge here and there, but the boils and the swirl of this current will highlight your mistakes a little more. But he's getting better and better, if you can tell. Still a little bit with the little cat paw paddles, almost like a cat walking in grass or something. Here he is, kind of just holding a surf, getting over with zero downstream, great ferry. And he's just learning how to mix it up. One technique I introduced him to is to use the boil line on a hole because there's not a lot of downstream current right on that boil line and you can kind of play a dicey game of getting across there without getting in the big current. But if you go too far, this is where you end up and what a brace he pulls it out. So yeah, if you get a little too close, you get sucked right in, but that's a good one. He kind of went right over the boil. So as you see, he's looking more and more comfortable, but I still got to get him on some bigger, slower, more meaningful paddle strokes. That's the last piece of the equation that he's missing here. On this next one, he finds the sweet spot with the boil ferry, and his boat's almost sideways to the current, but as you see, almost zero push down river and almost zero effort. And in all things kayaking, when you do it right, there's very little effort involved. It's just all about the technique. And when you do it wrong, you're in a side surf in the hole again. Now a back surf. Oh, way to go, Kev. Good stuff, doing battle. Perfect! You went a little too high. <laughs> there you go, nailed it. Like it's not even there, is it? It's just a matter of how you want to attack it. And since there's always something new to learn, I go ahead and introduce him to a switch ferry, 
which is ferrying through the current backwards. Everything you were doing forwards, do it backwards. In this one, I lose my boat angle and have to kind of fight to get that back. But even your eddy out in the current below needs to be done backwards. Just a great skill to have because you never know how you're going to end up in the river. In big water and creaking and river running, there's going to be times where you blow your line and you just have to work it out with plan B and having all these skills under your belt are going to make that exponentially easier. If you avoid trying to practice all these things, when it happens for real on a river, you're not going to be prepared to work it out. And as you can see, coming back down to the S-turn flush, it's a lot more manageable and Kevin's looking like a rock star down here. Even his paddle strokes are looking more authoritative and more confident, and he's just really having no issues at all. He's not letting his bow get washed downstream. He's trying new things and uh, just looking good. He looks relaxed. So now it's time to see if he can get his first roll in fast current. It's been a good day. And even if you don't whitewater kayak, you can do most of what we did in any kayak you had. The principles and techniques apply. Special thanks to my sister Marie with Blink of an Eye Photography and to Mercy Ann for being so fearless. Mm -hmm.